After over two years, the PGRU finally makes its triumphant return. The world has changed a lot in these past two years, and our Smash events are no different. To account for the difficulties of travel in a post-lockdown world, the PGRU has changed from a global ranking to a regional one. This time, we'll be going through the North American region, which also includes players from abroad who have made the trip over for at least two major events, or one major event and two regional events. The time period includes events from March 1st, 2022, through June 13th, 2022, a period beginning with Smash Ultimate Summit 4 and ending with Battle of BC 4. Now, we at Panda Global and PG Stats are proud to reveal to you the top 50 players in North America. First, we start with Area 51. These five players just barely missed the cup for the top 50 and deserve congratulations for a solid season. And you don't need to because he snatches him right up, takes him out, and that is a three stock. 2% on Ice and Miss stock. What can you find, Jordan? And it's just a simple up throw full of rage. And that is going to be it. I don't even know. Can he make it past this legend? No, he cannot. I don't yeah. even know. If that you can read more about these players at the first link in the description below. And now, on to the top 50. Oh, we got those? Ooh. Oh, yo, oh, you know what time it is! of hell or whatever no way wow really oh my god did you did you see did you see the setup coming out the fire breath gonna add on a clean 20 damage oh we've seen that time and again brother i kind of wonder if this is dark was he trying to lull big boss to sleep and then just going for the big kill option what like that yeah. you catch the roll I feel like both of them are really feeling the pressure of the moment now that side B is going to go back, but gets the revenge into the forward air. Throwing out the projectiles if uh, Jelso is ever above him, trying to get him with an up air. Oh, that's crazy. With the Power Rail Minecart, and we are now in the last stock either way of the Yo. tournament, and that is going to be it. Sean right now getting spooky. Oh, wow, he did. No! There. Wait a second. Yo. Skittles is nice there, with it. He goes for a reverse up here to push him on stage again. Goes for a down tilt. Oh, oh my he's dead. God! Are you oh, kidding me? Oh no! Oh wow. my gosh! In the air! What? That, that, that first one, that would have been an issue, but it doesn't work now! It does! Aaron takes it from behind! The platform. Shenanigans like that are possible. We're only on third rotation. Go oh for a back God, throw, and that's, that's it. Yeah, this is definitely becoming a nail biter. Goblin getting back from some of the devs, but not this time. Okay, escapes at the exact perfect times. Okay, the fair train is how it gets started, but they're grenade! Oh, Frame one grenade! Goodness. Jack will hold it on to his double jump. Able to get back to the ledge, oh, the backer connects! Gonna that's gonna be it! All right, no jump. No not, jump. not gonna switch, though. Oh, oh you're, down, you're now. Yeah, this is the end. Hit him again, too, just for fun. Yep. Yeah! <laughs> To that back air as Wizzy looks to try to recover back to the stage, but it's not gonna happen. For more on players 50 through 31, head on over to pgstats.com via the second link in the description below. Now, let's move on to players 30 through 11. Yeah, I, I, I'm just very curious. Oh. I mean, Sean needs to find an answer to 
essentially MVD, the main thing is the shield when MVD shielding with a grenade oh. and that's another stall. Oh. And, and again, this the damage piling on Mustang. Oh my god, the wing fair almost killing him. He oh just gets it. Goodness. All it took was one advantage state. Game. He has enough rage to do it, the but that's his huge. double jump. He's gonna be forced to the jump. Oh, the jump into the net. Let's go! Link pops off! For life here. Not just yet. Out right there. On oh, the back air. Is that going to do it? And it will! Ready and waiting. Had to use Nair to cover him, so that's right. Okay, gets the sour hit of back air. Up air might be enough to do it, and it most certainly will. I don't know when he was going to finally be able to, I thought he was going to go for the jab jab, but like he's way too far away, oh, so that was way too oh, much. Max, oh my god, what is that right now? Max, you were talking, you were talking. Oh, 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 oh. But he is intimidated, he's trying to find a way to avoid Goblin, but off of that parry, off that jab, it's the back here, you aren't going to go anywhere. Okay. Yeah, you can definitely see it. I'm playing with some intensity right here. Oh, the oh back my. air, is that Jack enough? Yeah. And oh. Jackal oh. takes it over oh. Zamba? Could be a thing. Oh, oh. oh. Yeah. my Damn. God. He yeah, did. Yeah. Nice. Clutch most. Laser. Explosive flame wall being put out. Dash check again. Riz and repeat. Low Imani has made his way to top eight. And he is one stock away now from taking out Shuton. And that's gonna be us! Oh my god, Ron! I thought it was over! Wait, no. ah! 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 Already at 77, getting snatched up again into the oh back my god! Wow! wow. And Yanni wow. does it wow with an emphatic pop-up. Where are you going? Where are you going? The block also blocking him off to the oh. side. He has to do it again. Oh. He's got all the time in the world to prepare. Down air into a side B. <laughs> Man. Oh, he went. No, where the hell did he go? Oh, my God. Oh, <gasps> my God. No way, oh, bro. <laughs> Very badly. Very. Oh. Nothing. I thought we might see an up B, but nothing came out. Oh, uh -oh. no. Ah, what a wait there by Chad. Myron in such a solid position to take oh. this and advance to the yeah. losers bracket. The anti-air is going to be it. The Siski special. Yeah, he's been putting those further forward That's now. That's a free grab, and that's going to be the up and he gets it. Siski's in top eight. Of all options. Oh my goodness. It's like the stage of the nation there. And mute ace beats Smargo. Very high recovery here from Riddles. That's and it. you're gone though. The neutral air back air and Sonics has done it again. Okay. Sephiroth light as a butterfly. Very smart. Goes back to the left. Wait. That time to back air. He's going to do it. Ken wins the battle of BC4. For more on players 30 through 11, head on over to pgstats.com via the third link in the description below. Now, without further ado, your PGRU V3 North America Top 10. Oh, okay, he's got to go. Oh, 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 you have to win this. This is your game now, okay. bro. Yeah, yeah, he has to win this. He wanted you to oh. win. Don't get grabbed. He's, I, I feel a grab coming. Oh, 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 Returning to the PGRU with yet another top 10 finish, we have Mexico's very own Mr. Game & Watch extraordinaire and harnesser of the Avatar State, Enrique Hernandez Meister Solis. Despite a meta that seemingly power creeps the little 2D menace by the day, Meister continues to represent Game & Watch at the highest level of play, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the best the world has to offer. With a punished game like none other, the revolutionary Meister turns Game & Watch into a guillotine. Lethal, indiscriminate, and a spectacle for the sadistic bystanders that surely want nowhere near the receiving end of the blade. From the very beginning of the season, Meister's placements at major events would only get better and better. From a respectable yet somewhat lackluster 25th at Genesis 
versus eight. Meister would go on to place a fantastic seventh place at Low Tide City 2022, and even a whopping third at Momocon 2022. Both seasoned and prodigal players alike, like 8-Bitman, Syro, Base Mage, Shattuck, Didi, Yanni, and even Tweak himself have all had their heads taken by Meister. With additional wins on players like Fatality, Proto Bantam, and Goblin during Smash Ultimate Summit 4, as well as a clean double elimination on Mutase at Houston's Limit Break, Meister has gotten wins that most players could only dream of catching. Unfortunately, it seems as though Meister has found himself quite the bracket demon. New York's very own Galaxy Brain DeBuzz has successfully knocked Meister down to the depths of the loser's bracket at both Low Tide City and Momocon, not to mention completely out of the running at the latter. These sets were all clean 3-0 sweeps in favor of DeBuzz. If Meister wants to keep struggling for power, it's time he conquers his demon, whether via tweaks to his game and watch strategy, or maybe a little bit more reliance on his growingly menacing pocket characters like Sora and Steve. Meister has been the Mr. Game and Watch frontrunner between two Smash titles and countless years. With one of the scariest juggling and ledge trapping games in the business, you cannot sleep on Meister for even a second, lest you wish for your stocks to be overthrown. Every day that passes is a day that Meister climbs further to the top, making sure nobody sits on their throne without having something to worry about at night. It's just his ability to just kind of recognize situations, have the perfect punish ready right there, man. Just so adapt. I and mean, the discipline, because like he doesn't swing early. You know what I mean? Yeah. He waits for the air dodge. He waits for the jump. The dude is just on fire right now. Salvatore Zamba de Sena is pretty all right at Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. In the middle of one of the most competitive, explosive, and inconsistent metas of any iteration of Smash, Zamba, also known as Zombino, Zombert, or Zimbabwe, who the hell wrote that? Makes his PGRU debut with a historic ninth place in a sea of fellow gyro tossing, laser shooting, arm spinning big robots. It's Zamba who rose to the occasion and distinguished himself as the best Rob in the world. Of the six major events Zamba competed in this season, he fell short of top eight only twice. He placed second at Level Up Arena 4, fifth at Genesis 8, fifth at Pound 2022, and fourth at Low Tide City 2022. He amassed a collection of names like none other, including wins on Apollo Kage, Skittles, Send, Myron, Goblin, Siski, Yanni, Sean, Ling, Aaron, Wadi, Mutes, Dark Wizzy, Puppe, and DeBuzz. Zamba farmed. However, one titan that Zamba has yet to vanquish is none other than the prodigal Spargo himself. These two have quite a history together, going as far back as the Smash 4 crew battle days. Spargo crushed Zamba's winner's run back at Genesis 8, and even knocked him out of the bracket altogether at Low Tide City 2022. Zamba has already achieved what so many competitors could only dream of. Everyone in Smash knows who he is, be it through his stellar bracket performances, iconic late-game Zombears, or that very interesting Twitter presence. Tri-State is certainly proud of all the growth this young Rob has undergone, and while Zamba can see the peak of the mountain that he's currently climbing, the journey somehow only becomes more arduous. Cola is so close to taking this W and knocking Spargo out. That's a jump. This pop off though. Do you, do you take the risk? Oh. No, hold ledge. Oh my oh, god! He did it! Cola oh, beat Spargo! Oh my god! Oh my god. Kola Wole, Kola Adeyan, spent the last 18 months or so climbing his way up to the top of Ultimate's upper echelon, culminating in a top 10 ranking and an undisputed title of best Roy in the world. Kola worked his way to number 8 on the PGRU even with some of his best performances wiped off the board due to being before or after the ranking period. Second at Let's Make Big Moves 2022 in January was too soon, and fifth place is at Double Down 2022 and Get On My Level 2022 were just a bit too late. As for what he was able to to achieve within the ranking season, it's a stacked resume. Ninth at Momocon 2022 serves as the hard floor, but even that event featured red hot losers bracket runs and a handful of premier wins in the form of Shattuck and Fatality. Aside from that anomaly, you'd be hard pressed to catch Cola outside of a top eight. First at Keep It Real, second at Low Tide City 2022, seventh at Genesis 8, and seventh at Collision 2022 reinforce the norm. And sets over Louis Money, the Buzz, Ned, Dee Dee, Ling, Goblin, and Gluttony reaffirm the threat level. Cola continues to prove that he's a threat at any event he attends, but now the true test begins, breaking into the top five of the next PGRU. But between Double Down and Gommel, he's got a strong head start already. Say that. So Luma, Luma had to trick you just a little bit here, especially with no rage, but you got 137 on Meister. 
This is Sora talking about. Yeah. You do freeze on the other side. Unfortunate, but you're definitely going to get punished. Good morning, PGRU. This is your captain speaking. We are en route to discussing Samuel DeBuzz Busby, Ultimate's most consistent player throughout his three-year lifespan. And this PGR season seems to be no different with no turbulence in sight in the lead-up for a seventh-place ranking. If you look in your seat pocket, you'll see the King of New York's results. Between three S-tier events, Genesis Pound and Momocon, and two A-tiers, Ultimate Summit 4 and Low Tide City, he's taken no set losses to anyone outside the NA Top 10 not named Proto Bantam. And for good measure, may we direct you to his win at C-tier event Warped. Stow your trade tables, push your seat forward, and take a look at the Rosa and Alf Main's win profile. Zamba, Meister, Mutace, Myron, Yanni, Louie Money, and pretty much every North American contender looking to push past his Luma and Purple Pikmin size wall. Local time at arrival is the Buzz's time to finally take the big career major win he's been hunting for that he always seems on the cusp of finally attaining. Everyone knows that he can do it, all he needs to do is break free past the handful of players that gatekeep him from the crown. Thank you so much for flying with Air Pikmin, and, uh... Hey, wait a minute, what did you say about this guy's pilot license? He's swinging that goal, he's swinging. He's swinging uh -oh. and it's hitting the trip into the electric. Oh, this yep, is a the nair, nair, nair. Oh, oh wow. my god. god! Riddles came into this season treading water. He flashed potential in PGR Season 2, earning the 47th rank when he was just 17 years old. And he had looked good on Wi-Fi, earning the 10th rank on the Wi-Fi Warrior rankings in June of 2021. But in early 2022, Riddles just didn't look like himself. He had lost confidence in Terry and switched over to Roy. And in his first tournament with the character, the last tournament before this ranking season began, he finished 49th, his worst ever performance at an offline tournament. And then something clicked. Riddles only missed one top eight this season after never making top eight in his entire career at an offline S or A tier event before the season started. He did not lose to a single player ranked outside the top 20 at any major, and he pioneered two characters that previously had no top level representation into god killer status, taking sets off of anyone who stood too close to him. We previously talked about a fourth place curse for Riddles because he finished fourth at Pound, Collision, and Battle of BC4, but one man's curse is another man's dream. Riddles proved that he belongs with the best of the best and has figured out tricks and combos and setups to handle almost any player on earth. Seemingly the only riddle he can't solve is how to win a major, but he's at the height of his power right now at only 18 years old. So who knows, maybe he'll be able to figure that one out sooner than you think. So ready for it, he inched forward to beat that out too. Yeah, he's got an iron grip, grip right now, man. He's not letting him out of the corner. Back air, pressure now, down tilt, back air. That's and it. he does it! Tweak takes that MK Leo in game four, stopping around. Oh, the chair got a little action too, getting in the mix. Going into the closest thing we've had to a true PGR season since all offline activity was frozen over two years ago, New Jersey's top player Gavin Tweak Dempsey was expected to fight for Ultimate's number one spot. Even then, labeling this season as a slump or saying he missed the mark would be incredibly silly, considering he still managed to comfortably slot into the top five of early 2022's PGR. Not a lot of players in the game can pull that off and say they left food on the table. The world's best Diddy Kong and Sephiroth showed no qualms proving both points, swapping between the two during critical junctures of multiple runs last season. This combination netted him wins against most of Ultimate's premier talent, including, but not limited to, Light, Riddles, Spargo, Glutiny, Proto Bantam, Lima, Fatality, Ling, Mutace, and of course, MKLeo. Tweak has an ability to take down anybody in the world that simply must be respected. A double upset at Genesis 8 that put him out at 33rd place is the only real blemish on his resume, as Tweak finished 2nd at Collision 2022, 4th at Momocon 2022, and 5th at Smash Ultimate Summit 4. Going into the back half of the year, a return to form will be in order for Tweak, and with such a return should come his second major victory. But for now, 5th is where he hangs his hat. The bus still looking like in trouble, was not able to close out this dog. The back throw is still not enough, trying to get the snipe off the edge. The two frame not going to connect here. And, up yeah. wow. and that was the perfect, perfect fair, man. You see him pop up there. Paris Light Ramirez is on the hottest streak of his career, not placing worse than fifth at any offline major he's entered since March. His pantheon of wins is a who's who in competitive ultimate. And chances are, if you play this game enough, you've lost the light at least once. MK, Leo, Riddles, Cola, and DeBuzz are just the tip of an exceedingly impressive iceberg.
His few rare losses this season only ever came at the hands of fellow PGR UV3 ranked players, and only three of them were by players ranked lower than him. Light's statistical worst loss this season came at the hands of Ling, ranked 28th and the number two players in their common home state of Connecticut. It happened at a 44 entrant weekly series, Vortex Legends 4, and was Ling's first recorded win against Light after 35 consecutive recorded losses. Light immediately returned the favor in a 3-0 to earn a first place finish, bringing their current total set count to a resounding, oh my god, 79-4 in Light's favor. Speaking of finishing first, Light secured a win at three offline events with over 100 entrants this season. CT GamerCon 5, Board the Platforms, and of course, MobileCon 2022. The second largest North American event in this ranking period, and the tournament that cemented Light's status as the best of the US. In the 10 sets he played at Momocon, he only ever dropped two games, one to Chunky Kong in pools, and the other to DeBuzz in winner's finals. Light accomplished all of this wielding only a solo fox, making Light the second highest solo main on this list. And with a character who doesn't have any other top level representation at that, save for the occasional secondary from Louis Money. Carving out a niche in Ultimate's competitive meta, Light moves like few other players, slamming on the gas and not letting up to create an absolutely suffocating atmosphere for his opponents. With a deep respect for his competition and a healthy level of cockiness that allows him to thrive in a competitive setting, Light is maturing into a competitor worthy of a spot among Smash's all-time greats. Could have been the start of something insane. Yep, Nair 1-2, to two, not a true combo, especially at 0%, you just don't go far enough away. Oh, Bluto starting it up! Uh -oh. Got the up throw up here. Just need. No it. way! That is it, Pluto wins Proud 2022! When offline events return in mid 2021, William Glutony Belade seemed to struggle to return to form. He rarely beat top 10 players, missed top 8 at events like Main Stage 2021 and the Smash World Tour Championships, and began to lose tournaments to his fellow Europeans for the first time. Despite the rare bump in the road for Europe's undisputed King of Smash, Glutiny's results have since skyrocketed to new heights as the Frenchman has claimed his highest spot to date on an international ranking. Though once renowned for his dominance in Europe, Glutiny's worst event of this season ironically came at a European event, Wanted S4C4, where he lost to Momon and Rayon for 17th place. Despite his in-region slip-up, Glutiny consistently excelled at out-of-country tournaments. He placed no lower than ninth at any of the six majors he attended in North America, with top eight finishes at all but collision. Glutiny peaked with a first place finish at Pound, defeating MK Leo, Light, DeBuzz, and Sonics en route to not only his first major win outside of Europe, but Ultimate's first major win for a European player outside of the continent. Across his other tournament appearances, Glutiny racked up additional wins over Spargo, Cola, Zamba, Meister, Siski, Chag, Cosmos, Goblin, Kome, and many more. With multiple wins over the two players ranked above him and a dominant 3-0 record against Light, Glutiny has solidly positioned himself as one of the best players in the world and the ideal flag bearer for European Smash as it heads into what looks to be its strongest era yet. He has to not only find a way to shape this last stock off, but he has to zero to death or play completely die, perfectly yeah. next time. That's the toughest thing, but there it comes. What a perfect way to close it out because Spargo, the climb hazard was so good all day. Limit Whoa. climb hazard closing that one out. In the beginning, they were just rumors, rumblings in Twitter discussions and YouTube comments that there was another young rising star coming out of Mexico to challenge MK Leo, the same way that Leo had done years earlier. He had always been a Wi-Fi threat, being ranked number two on Ultimate's first Wi-Fi Warrior ranking at the young age of 13. And of course, he dominated during Ultimate's forced Wi-Fi era during the pandemic. But by the time the offline tournaments returned in July of 2021, the floodgates were open. The rumors were true. Spargo had not just leveled up, he was breaking the game. And since then, he's become the person most able to consistently challenge MK Leo for the title of the world's best player. During this season, the only players he lost to at a qualified tournament were MKLeo, Glutiny, Tweak, and Mutase. He has a winning record versus Tweak this season, is tied with Glutiny, and only has losing records versus Mutase, 01, and Leo, 24. His lowest placement this season is third, a placement he earned at an event with 1,959 players, a placing that would make the careers of many players, some of those on this list included. Spargo is taking time off from Smash for now, an understandable decision from someone who has been under immense pressure for a full year now, at an age where most people's biggest stressor is homework. 
If he ever does come back to competition, he'll have nothing to prove. He's proven himself on every stage time and time again versus the world's best competition. The only person standing between Spargo and his unlimited potential in the world of Smash Brothers is himself. Well, <laughs> himself and one other person. Oh no! The dash attack costing Pluto everything! And Leo, yet again on the top of the mountain at Genesis, captures his fourth title. Absolutely insane. As if there was ever any doubt. For the third time in as many chances, Leonardo MK Leo Lopez Perez sits atop the rankings. But for the first time, there were real challenges to the throne. For the first time in three PGRU seasons, MK Leo's score dipped below a perfect 100, reflecting the few times this season where he has seemed human. He got 4th at Ultimate Summit 4, losing to Spargo and Proto Bantam, 3rd at Collision, losing to Spargo and Tweak, and 2nd at Pound, losing to Gluttony twice. At Genesis 8, the season's biggest major, MKLeo proved he's still the world's best, going on a ridiculous 12-0 run to the championship, including wins over numbers 2, 3, and 4 on this list. Not only did he defeat his top contenders for the throne, but he continued to do it his way, using Solo Byleth for the entire bracket. Aside from the Mexican Invitational Tournament, Rada 2022, Genesis was Leo's only major tournament win of the season. That's a rarity for Leo, who finally lost the consecutive major tournaments for the first time in years at Ultimate Summit 4 and Collision 2022. But the fact remains that he still has managed to maintain his level of dominance in the face of some of his strongest competitors yet, all while mostly dedicating himself to characters like Corrin and Byleth. And that says all you need to know about Leo's level of dominance in Ultimate's past and present. The gap between Leo and the rest of the world ever so slightly closed in the PGRU Season 3. For Leo and the few that have shown they can challenge him, Season 4 just might be the most interesting one yet. Young players are rising, led by Spargo. Europe is rising, led by Gluttony. Japan has players like Ken, Akola, and Proto Bantam, who have proven capable of winning at home and overseas. And here at home, players like Light and Tweak promise to threaten Leo at any American major he enters. The competition has never been fiercer, but for now, Leo deservedly holds the title of best Super Smash Bros. Ultimate player in the world. The PGR season continues next week with the releases of the NA Summer MPGR and our list of Japan's 50 ultimate players to watch. Follow us on Twitter, subscribe to this channel, and bookmark pgstats.com to keep up with the latest on the PGR and Smash as a whole.